Well, one of the first albums I got was um, Live Magic by Queen. And that was my introduction, really. And I didn't get to go to many gigs. You know, we didn't. We, you know, we we play a lot in pubs, but from where we where we're from is so far away from anywhere that that these shows would be put on. Mm -hmm. um, there's just no way that we'd be able to go and see these things, you know. So um, there's no big venue in either of the the towns that are, were within a 150 mile radius of us. So yeah. we're just from a very un, un you know unpopulated place. So and also we di you know we didn't have much money and we kind of cut off from the outside world in a way. So um, so we had to imagine what it's like and just buy the live albums and videos and so I think that's kind of got might maybe shaped our sound a bit. And the way that we've that we've approached everything, because <clears throat> we didn't have any, didn't really go to many middle ground, smaller gigs. All we all we saw was like the very small pubs, and then you know watch videos and and get into the live albums that were. Uh, yeah. Shit out of this boy. It's Justin. It's Justin's actually got a pair of Kylie's knickers. Hi, Justin. Hi. Kylie's knickers. That's a pair of Kylie's uh, pants. Wow. Are you wearing those tonight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we got a we got a scoop here. Right from the very start, it was obvious we were a band that that, that needs to be playing in a, in very large places, um, big stages with pyros and and you know big sets and stuff. So when we actually get there, rather than be nervous about it, we actually enjoy it because mm. we know that the next day we might be playing to 500 people or a thousand. So and as long as there are people enjoying it, mm. we also have shows that are events. You know, yeah. we stopped calling um, we started calling gigs shows about a year ago because. You know, it's a gig didn't seem the right word for it anymore, so... Hey! Hey! Right. In the UK, we released a single in February, which uh, made it to number 43 in the charts. That's 43. And it had a lot of swearing in it. Some fairly naughty words and what have you and we'd like to play it for you right now it's called get your hands up my woman motherfucker probably a lot of people will, will be here tonight because they think it's a joke yeah i mean that would be cool because um you know well it won't stop us from from you know doing outrageous things you know or, or wearing outrageous things because um that's what we are i mean um, ultimately, at the end of the gig tonight, if people walk out thinking we're a joke band, then uh, then fuck them because um, it just doesn't matter. I think I don't see why people always have to categorise things as mm -hmm. like as as black and white. You know, like why can't you play hard rock music and be a really great, you know, you know ferocious band and and still have a bit of fun, you know, with the with the with the display of it. You know? yeah. So I'm not worried about that really. You know? And. Um, We'll get up there and we'll do our thing, you know, we'll be very loud and we're going to have a lot of fun and if, 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 if the people want to join in with us, then they can. If not, then they can go, go and watch some other band, you know. I think with us, we don't have to act when we go on stage, you know. We get gen genuinely excited about what we do um, and, and it all just happens and, you know, Justin sort of um, it is like an extension of, of who he is on stage, whereas a lot of people have to put themselves into a, a different mindset or become someone else. And I'm saying that that's when it, I think it must get really difficult because, uh, you know, for people that, that are actually acting, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not real, and but it, it consumes your whole life. So you'd have to act all the time. And yeah. you probably lose perspective of who you were in the first place if if you have to click into this, I'm someone else all the time. Whereas I'm sat here talking to you, like, exactly as I would anyone. And when I go on stage, you know, I, I, I do... It's just, you know, I don't have to... I don't have to imagine I'm fucking Jimmy Page or whatever. I just do my thing, and the rest of the band are exactly the same. So, yeah. so when you operate like that, and we've known each other for so long, that if someone steps out of line, they have the piss taken out of them, sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't see it happening. You know, as long as you take it with a pinch of salt, it's fine. You know, mm -hmm. basically, there's nothing that you should take too seriously, no matter how big it is or whatever, because ultimately, it's like, um, you know, these are just things that you do when you're in a band it doesn't matter how big they get you know you yeah. know, it stops being enjoyable because you're, you're nervous about it you know it's it's not worth doing really is it it's it's a difficult one hey wait wait give me a fucking second hey
Now, everyone in the building, yeah? It's the last time, I swear. You and uh, Justin are uh, uh, brothers. The important question is, obviously, was he like this as a kid, uh, dressing up in front of the mirror, and and how did yeah. you look upon that? Um, when we lived together, when we, when we were kids, we, you know, we got on, but then we didn't really at all as well. There were a lot of egos, a lot of, you know, like, kind of differences. Very, we're very, very different people, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of... Uh, it's one of those things where, where, like, when when he moved out of the house, suddenly we started getting on really well. But it's like, you know, we just we just didn't get on for ages. And but but we've been mates for a long time now. So and um, we both know exactly what we're doing. We've got our own roles. And and uh, but yeah, he's always been an extrovert in school and stuff. He was just really over the top. I mean, he used to do some outrageous things and was known for it as well. No, I think he was always known for being a bit unhinged. People thought he was a bit, a bit mad, really. Um, but uh, you know, he's he's actually quite down to earth as well. You know, when he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> Did you were you ever jealous of him being uh, the kind of uh, someone who attracted the attention, or were you? Not at all. Uh, Not at all. He, he he's. Um, I was always very very grateful that he was the front man and was such a good front man because um, you know I like to play my guitar. And okay, maybe I'll front up for a solo, um, but basically, uh, I like to sit back and enjoy, you know, listening to me and Ed, the drummer, mm -hmm. play. You know, um, so I'm very grateful that he's, he's taken the limelight because it allows me to do exactly what I want to do and not feel self-conscious about it. You know, so I know that no one's looking at me half the time, so I can get into really playing my guitar. You know, yeah. but like occasionally when I want to step up, you know, you know, I, I've got the space to do that as well. So. Yeah. And you're not someone who would wear. Christina Aguilera sneakers on stage? No, well, the thing is, um, well, I might do, actually. I'd, I'd smell them, but I don't think I'd wear them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but he has to wear those sort of things because, uh, yeah. you know, you know, because of the, the, the outfits uh, demand that that you can't, you know, what's the point in having a cat suit that's sort of see-through on one side if you can see a big pair of boxer shorts, you know? It needs to be see-through knickers to see it through, so... Yeah. Yeah, he suffers for his art. So.